Hi there. I'm back. <coughs> anyway, hope you've all had a nice day or starting to have a nice day, depending on where you are. Here it's 8 pm on the night time, so my day is nearly over. <laughs> I shouldn't say that because I'm sort of like wishing my life away. And say things like that, your the day's nearly over. Anyway, hope you've all had a nice day or whatever you've been doing. Being what day are we on? Thursday? Thursday, being at work. Or perhaps you are at work if you're watching on re replay. So I hope I hope you've all had a nice day anyway. Oh dear, what in earth is going on with Sebastian Rogers? Please, someone make, help me make sense of this. Because there's a 15 year old autistic boy. He's walked out of his house, poof, gone. No child for the dogs. No home security cameras, no ring doorbell cameras, footage of it. Nothing. It's just poof, gone. Right? And yet, there's a criminal investigation. What is that? Because to be honest with you, I don't know what's going on. Because Law enforcement, some, some of the county law enforcement, sheriff's office and all that lot, I say there's no criminal investigation going on. Uh, one of the PIs, private investigators of Seth Rogers, that apparently there is a criminal investigation going on. So is there a criminal investigation? Isn't there a criminal investigation? Right? Now, it says here, she put in a request, a records request, for the missing persons report the day before yesterday on the Seth Rogers case. This was the response. Good afternoon. This is an open criminal investigation. We're unable to fulfill this request at this time. The request is complete. Right? But then you got Nick Berries coming on and saying, so many of you are following this case, which means a search for an investigation. In, pardon me, investigation only. I spoke with legal director Michelle Oswald, and she tells me this wording was an unfortunate mistake. Hmm. She says Sebastian's case remains an investigation. 
and not a criminal investigation. That, of course, is not to say things won't change depending on any new leads or evidence. So, why won't they give the PR of Seth Rogers, for Seth, who's acting on behalf of Seth Rogers, who's out, who's been hired to get, try and help him find his son? Why? Why won't they give her the, what was he, again? Why won't they give her the missing person? And report. If it's not a criminal case and it's just an investigation, well, that's all she's doing. She's just running an investigation. So why won't they give her the report? You know what I mean? That makes me go, that gives me a hmm moment when I hear things like that. So it's just. I don't know, I just don't understand where law enforcement and TBR are coming from. You know what I mean? You've got people out there searching daily, and the searches are still going on. Seth has had to get back a little bit because of his injury and just rest up. But he's still, he's still sorting things out. He's still on the phone to people and getting flyers out there and getting t-shirts to people and things like that. Right? Now, I suggested it. I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to read it on X. I don't know if it's on my X or on any of my X. Right. I'm going to tongue X somewhere. Right, but apparently I said it was Seth that donated to the billboards. It wasn't CP and KP. He said no because he was doing his own billboards by t-shirts printed off. And it's all right, I'm just watching some else on Twitter here. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. I'm just, is that for real? Yeah, if it's in the UK, that's for real. You see two guys running at you all, all in black and things in the hand. You're going to move your car, aren't you? You're not going to sit there and go, go on then. Anyway, I'm trying to find that information. Oh God! But um, I can understand what you're doing because they made it out that he made out and the profits come to him. No, what he said. There's a woman in Clarksville that does t-shirts and uh, they are literally a lot cheaper than what there was on that site that is promoting, which is just not promoting no more. Because someone said, will she give you any of the profits? And he said, no. He said, but at least that way, the money, anything made, is staying in Clarksville or Hendersonville. It'd rather the, the money stay in the community. Right? So he's not having any of that profit. Where someone was trying to make out he was. He wasn't. I remember him saying it clearly. The woman is, keeps all the profits. She's 
doing all the work. You know what I mean? So why should she not keep the profit? So So I just wanted to correct myself on that. I like to correct myself if I find out I've said something wrong. Because I thought it was Seth that I donated to the bill. It wasn't. It was Chris and Katie. And Seth said no because he was doing his own T-shirt. They were walking billboards. You know what I mean? These billboards are only in, what, Tennessee? Hendersonville, Tennessee, and places like that. People all over the world are ordering these T-shirts. So, I'm so tempted to just wear it when I'm on a live, when I'm doing a live for Sebastian. Because... He needs, he, this lad needs to come home now. He really needs to. It's like I said weeks ago, it's getting to the point where people are picking sides, right? You either with CP, KP, or you with Seth. Well, it's not about sides. It's not about sides. It's about Sebastian Wayne Greg Rogers. That's who this is about. Not about Chris, not about Katie, it's not about Seth. Right? Even though people do, we do talk about Seth a lot and we do talk about Chris and Katie a lot. It's not about them. So I'm not picking sides. And then people say, oh, you're judging, you're judging CP and KP. No, we're not judging them. We're going on their behaviour, right? When you look at Seth, from day one, he's been out there looking for his son. Right? Please didn't stop him. All the police said at first was, just let us know where you're going, what areas you're searching, so that if anything happens, we know where to go and find you. So that's what he was doing. Right, and um, but he was out there because, to be honest with you, if there's an autistic child, right, they say they don't like the parents out there because if that child is alive, you're going to want to go and just hold him and never let him go again, you know what I mean? But you can't because that child is evidence it's clothing is evidence everything on it is evidence right so i can understand where they say they don't really like parents being involved in a search but like i said it was not stopping the uh katie and chris from going out there door to door and putting the leaflet uh Flyers out there. They could have done that. But they didn't. And the only reason you don't search for someone is because you know where they are. You search for someone who's missing. You don't search for someone where you know if you know where they are. Right, so I'm not judging them as such. I'm not saying they're guilty, they're guilty, they're guilty. I'm not just saying I am. I'm judging on their actions, their behaviours. I look at the words they use. Right? So, and not going away, leaving the family home when you've got a, little, a young boy missing. If I had a child who was missing, I would never leave my home. Never. Even if it was 10 years, 20 years, I'd stay in that 
right? But I think police did mess up. They didn't do an investigation, a forensic investigation of the home. They should have done straight away, and they didn't. Uh, they could have said to parents, well, this is just a uh, routine. We have to do a quick, this forensic investigation. We have to clear, tick all the boxes. Once you've got the investig once you've got all that forensic evidence, if there is any, then you can move on. But at the moment, they're saying they've got no reason, nothing to say uh, there was a criminal act. Yeah, no reason. It's because you didn't do a forensic investigation at the very beginning. Such as, where's this clothes from the Sunday night? They won't tell them, they won't even tell Seth. They just had to go at him for talking about his clothes that he was wearing on a YouTube channel. Apparently he got in trouble for talking about what he was wearing on the Sunday night. Why? We don't know what he was wearing. We only have, have sorry, I'm stuck on this part here on time. But watching this thing go this I'm mesmerized by that thing. Right, um let's see. Right. This is the route. He walks this and then he turned and he went up this way, like this, all the way up to the top. The dog kept tracking and then into the sort of the northwest or east portion of the uh, construction area and walked right to about here. And then there's a, there's a retention pond right here now. Sebastian walking like this, then behind, and then right through here like this. And then past the house that had the fixed light on it, like that. He walks this, and then he turned, and he went up this way, like this, all the way up to the top. Yeah. The dog kept tracking, and then into. So, pass all down. I'll go back to there. But I'll take the signs off. To the sort of the northwest. If that, if Sebastian had got, took that route. I wasn't going to talk about this. This is just something I've just come across now. If Sebastian took that route, why didn't this go on this house? There's no sign of him on any camera on those houses. Right? No sign of him. That didn't catch him. Yeah. yeah. That didn't catch him. That house there didn't catch him. None of these houses have got him on camera. These houses here. Nothing. Don't forget you now that uh, side the more it shows on here. So, um, I'm trying to find that thing.
Okay. I can't find it now. Right. But, yeah, it's, um... So, I just want to know, if it's not a criminal investigation, why won't they give her the missing persons report that was made? What are they hiding? What they, what don't they want anyone to know? Stephen said himself he noticed on the day, the first day, when the police were talking to her, the first morning, that her story changed a couple of times then. So what the hell is going on? Why won't they give out the information to these private investigators? Hi there, everyone who's just joined us on Twitter. We're just talking about everything and anything today. It's more about the private investigators that Stefford took on. He had two before, but he got he he got rid of them because they wasn't bringing any information in. Right. Uh, he's got another two now, but the one we don't know about, but the other one, she's all over YouTube. Now, I'm sorry, she shouldn't be talking about this case on YouTube. She shouldn't. She should be talking to Seth. And then if Seth wants to talk about it, then fair enough. But I don't think she should be talking about it. So, let's have a look. Is it on here or see? Yeah. No. No, I've never heard of this foundation, but I'm not from the USA, so I will do. Has anyone here? You heard of the UV No? Yes? Um apparently they're a voluntary organization, right? Who from what I can make out uh, uh helps children right missing to Right. Now, this is what I I'm, isn't true. Right. I just said this case here. It says, "Does anyone know Seth was up to date on his child support payment? No more child, no more payment. That seems like motive." Well, Seth has already. Said Near the beginning, when they went to the divorce, they went, the divorce said they come up to this agreement where they have 50 50, right? Where he'd have him on every other weekend and on the holidays and things like that. Right? There was no child payments made. Right? So we didn't pay any child support, but if Katie said, oh, we need a new pair of glasses, or we need a new pair of shoes, we need to see, he would go out and buy it in. Right? So there's no, that was the agreement, there would be no child support payment. So, let's see what it says. Yeah. Yeah, they had fifty fifty. Seth wouldn't have to pay his child support.
Right? Now, someone just said, if they had 50-50, why would they discuss changing custody arrangement? Because it was also stated in the divorce that at any time that Sebastian was dad, he could. Right? And all it is is just changing custodial rights over, which means he lives with his dad during the week and his mum gets him one weekend, once a fortnight, one weekend a fortnight, and on weekends if she wants, right? On holidays times if she wants. Right? And that was it. That's all I was doing. They're just doing a role reversal. Instead of Katie having him all week and Seth having him once, once every, every two weeks, and during the holidays, it was just he'd having for a week. His mother then would have him one weekend every two weeks, so that's two weekends a month, and on holidays. That's it. I know people think, well, uh, Seth might have done something. No. As, Seth, as people say, you don't go out looking for something which isn't lost. Right? Seth isn't eating right. He isn't sleeping. He isn't giving you um, body. Well, he wasn't. But he has took a few days down now, right? He wasn't giving his body time to recover from any injuries. His stress levels were so high, his anxiety, he was he couldn't sleep. Now do uh, Katie and Chris have those problems? Right? Where they're not eating properly. Where they can't sleep. They have injuries, body injuries. And I think that neck injury, because he said it wasn't his shoulder, it was actually his neck. And the pain was coming from his neck into his shoulder. Now that can be caused through stress. Right? So, have they had any of them problems? I don't think. Right? Because only the other weekend they was having a nice barbecue with their friends on the caravan park. Yeah. Seth has, isn't having no nice barbecues because as said already, his life is Sebastian. When he's at work, he's work Monday for two whole weeks. Right? Weekends and everything. And then the second weekend, he wouldn't work. He said when he went to pick up his son, that's when his life began. And then when he brought his son back home on a Sunday, that's when his life stopped. And he just go to the mundane routine of going back to work for the next two weeks, phoning his son during the week, right? And things like that. And then when you get him again two weeks later, his life will begin again. His life is said Sebastian. Is Sebastian. So people want to say, oh, are you taking sides? So you're taking sides. So Perhaps I am. Perhaps I am taking sides. So but I do try to stay neutral. I want to give Kate and Chris the benefit of the day. I really do. I really do. I would not. I do not want to think a mother would harm her child. I really don't. So I want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but they're not helping themselves. They're not helping themselves by doing what they do, and by acting the way they're doing, by talking, by saying the things they do. Right, someone noticed on their 
motorhome. They've got a security camera. And someone said, that's rich. They've got a security camera on their five-wheeler, but they couldn't have a security camera on their home. Right? Now, to be honest with you, someone else said, if you feeling threatened, you're more at threat. You're more in danger being a five-wheeler than you are in a house. More in danger. Right? So, it's just... Little things are what's getting to me. And when I go through this, Oh, J for justice. Hold on, I'll have a look for that. Google Maps to guide. The landfill where rubbish is in a waste for that area. And it's just taking me to their head offices. Um, if anyone knows that, please let me know. All right, let's see what they've got here. Uh, I'll have to put some more there. Okay, I think this is. Mm hmm. Not that long ago, I know it was in that long ago. But, I do know, I have seen uh, videos of that note with the home security. And it is just the camera, all you see is the cars on the driveway, right? And then two, then you've got some security lights. Over a bit, home security light. Then you got these two little flashlights. I don't see any garbage truck. Unless, you know what I mean? I don't see any garbage truck. I only see, I see if I can find it. It's on you. Anyway, so I'm just trying to find that those two.
Você tem que marcar, você tá. When you paused that video, that interview of Katie the other day, at a certain time when you paused it, you could see Sebastian. Now it's a picture of Sebastian in a frame. Because you can't actually see the frame. Right? So I don't know how that would have got there. And it isn't put on there because I was watching it the other night on someone else's YouTube channel and he just paused it. He didn't say anything. He didn't notice it himself. And he paused it and I went, there's that picture of Sebastian. Could it be a reflection? I don't know. I really Could it be a reflection? to that frame there and it's reflecting back. I don't know if anyone of you know, but <coughs> who knows of Ziggy? She's got a YouTube channel, Ziggy. Okay. But for a while now, she's been talking to Fred Hill, who lived on Ben Hill Road. And he's telling her information about the day Slimmer Moon went missing and what he saw and all this stuff. You know what? From what I've seen today on my Facebook page, they've got married. Because I wondered why she's down in Tennessee, right? And I thought, oh, perhaps she's down there to do some for summer because it's coming up to. What, three years or four years this year? I can't remember. I think it's four years now. And, um, I'm not sure. Oh, could be three years. I'd have to check on that, to be honest. But, um, I thought she was down there because of Summer Moon, Utah, Wells. And then she put a picture up of her and Fred. And it was a really nice picture, and I thought, oh, I'm nice. That's lovely. Congratulations. And then today, I go on my Facebook page, and there's a marriage certificate and everything. I thought, flipping out. Ziggy, you don't waste time, do you? But congratulations to them both, to Ziggy and Fred Hill. I wish them all the best. I really do. Uh -huh. I'm trying to find this information. It's not coming up. But anyway, that video I have seen. Right, don't know why they say you're saying anything now. Right, that video I have seen it, and it shows the car parked on the driveway. It shows the mm -hmm. uh, lights from security lights from this at one house right and it shows there's two torchy lights you know that one we just seen where that guy was showing you there was on twitter where is Now, see here, it was these lights on here, you could see, security to the house lights there, it was from God. You know what, I'd be better just going on to Google Maps. Right. Hmm. 
Alright. Let's get this on. I'm better with the layers on. Right. <coughs> now they're saying that's fair Sebastian. They're saying <coughs> anyway, that it was this light house light that was on. It's a cute light. It was has a hair, I believe, that caught the movement around here. <coughs> right? Now, people, I'm saying about that, if you're seeing on Twitter, if this camera picked up the two lights here, two little lights here, you see a load of cars on this drive. I will take you in. Now, this was a while ago. I don't know how long ago this was done. Right? But you see these cars here. There's another. <coughs> <coughs> so, this camera gets all the cars that are on this driveway. And picks up someone. So, yeah, they know besides with the spotlight. Now walking. Right. They are walking along here. Right. It would be a high angle. A high angle. Yeah, see the ditch. If there was, if whoever it was was walking in that ditch, that camera would see, would catch them, but it would look like it's from a high angle. And whoever was waiting was waiting. Was their camera not catching? Right? When? Where can we do? Oh, oh, I'll see if I can get it in. If that camera catches th that movement, yeah? Then. Right? Oh god, I'm trying my best. That's a round. Why is it their camera? Isn't. Unless their camera's pointed at an angle there. Could be. Perhaps there's it pointed at the cars. Could be. Just pointing this way. So it wouldn't cap, probably wouldn't get all this. Perhaps that might be why. I don't know. It makes you wonder. And on the video, it doesn't. I cannot see no garbage truck. Right? I see cars parked here. I see those club lights on on that house. And I see like another sort of thing over here. Yeah. And then I see number two coming around that way. And then it says you see number two going back towards the house. I, I cannot see a garbage truck. People say they can't. I can't. I see cars parked here. They're saying they see um of a car. No, they're not car. And they say perhaps whoever is coming this way get their lights off. But if you're going in that deep,
that camera would catch would seem quite high and from a distance don't forget because you just see all these cars here parked up here and then you see some floodlights over there you've got two harbour trucks So I don't understand where they're coming from when they go on about the garbage truck. I really don't. Anyway, going off the subject. You vowed. Right? Uh, let's just close this a minute. No, I'm not going to have to take with this up section. It'll close down for me. Right? Um, You vowed. Let's go on to my. Uh, look, there's me going live. I'm watching myself on YouTube. <laughs> right. Uh, you vowed the foundation for kids. Um, they came out the other day. Well, it came out a while ago, April the 16th. Not that long ago, really. Two days ago. They've gone, we are now convinced, 100% convinced that the family of the hashtag in Rogers knows far more than has been revealed publicly. We know that. We are also now equally convinced that recent development, developments indicate answers to be revealed soon. Then, I might the 17th, that was when I reposted this. Was it? I, put it, I know that's when I reposted I don't know when it came out, sorry. Then, the next day they came out and today our foundation had literally hundreds of messages and emails in regard to hashtag Sebastian Rogers, Rogers. and our efforts, our efforts continue to continue and our stance remains at this juncture to avoid jeopardizing the progressing investigation we cannot elaborate further answers are forthcoming here yeah. law enforcement told you to back up right and then it's not i'll be looking into this one and then what is it Mm -hmm. Right. This I would I post I shared or reposted today. I think I shared it from their page. Due to developments in the latest foundation for kids has ended its search for Sebastian Rogers. More TBA. More BS. Meaning, oh dear, we're not getting the funding, we're not getting any money given to us through this case. We can't afford to do this with no money. Meaning, scam. Scam. That's what you, you are. You're in it for the money, and I'm fed up to the high teeth of people like this foundation. United Cajun, Cajun Navy. They were in it for the money. I am fed up now of these organisations coming in and just take, saying they'll do this, they'll look here, they'll get these flyers out there, they'll go and have a look here. And then because they're not getting the money, the donations, they're back off. 
or they get scared by law enforcement and back off. UCN got scared because apparently they was getting threats. Right? It probably was. But you know why they was getting the threats? Because they're scamming. Because when anyone went up to sign up to do the searches, they was asking them the name and details, which is fair enough. You need to know the name and... Uh, Everything so they know how to contact anyone if you need any help. Why? Right? Uh, but because there's also asking, pushing people for their donations. And people are going, why have I got to give a donation? Why? Right? And they wouldn't let anyone video record the, the searches. Not even video, do a, a video of it and then edit it later. They wouldn't let no one do that. Uh, they wouldn't let them do lives. Because they did no searches. They did nothing. I don't even know what this organisation has done for Sebastian. Apart from apparently saying they was going to Alaska. I don't know how true that was. But this organisation, from what I can make out, works with schools as well. Right? In schools and all that lot. So, I think, I think it'd be nice for some organisation to come through and say, look, you can help. You don't want your money. You don't. We really don't want any money. But we are willing to help you. We are willing to help you navigate this. Like it would be nice if uh, Seth could get a, a lawyer, an attorney, right, who would come along and say, you know what, I'll help you. I'm not going to charge him. I'll do it pro bono. Right? But I'll help you, and I'll help you navigate that. Because if an attorney goes up to the police and says, look, we need the information, this information, why, you know what I mean? They've got to give it to an attorney. They've got to. Have they not? I'm sure they've got to give it to an attorney. So it'd be nice if there was an attorney out there anywhere, anyone knowing an attorney, who would be willing to help Seth and not just for the money. Not just for money, for the fact they have a heart. The fact that they want to help this father navigate everything he's going through. Well, to get the information he wants from law enforcement. Because apparently, Chris and Kate have been told everything. I don't think that's true. I really don't think that's true. If it is true, then I would be mad as a hacker. I'd be ripping, knocking teeth out, not knocking doors down, knocking teeth out. Because why are you telling them the information, but you won't tell a bio father? Uh huh. He works for law enforcement. So, right, so does anyone know anything about this group? You know, I can't, whenever I look up anything, right, I'll try again. See what it says. Right. <coughs> Come on. The Uvalde Foundation for Keith, the National Filing Advocate Kate to end in and reaching 
student lives. So it is, it's all about working in the schools with the children. There is this exist a national revolution happening in this country to protect our, our youth and students. It is aggressive, yes, yet peaceful. Yet grassroots. Through valiant efforts over the years to end school and student violence has made some progress. Not a lot. Sustainable progress will not be put behind the sessions of lawmakers or gun control alone. Right? So they work mainly in schools. They have volunteer patrol, school patrol teams, jumping out, critical incident school crisis response team, professional and peer mental health support, student and school community, chaplain CK. Students and school advocacy, independent school safety assessment, students and school anti violence training to teach students and staff how to prevent and respond to violence. The focus on behaviour modification, situation awareness using our recognised intervene and prevent and prevent models. Now, I read something the other day. The organiser of this foundation. I've gone on a hunger strike over something. Now, what's that? Can the kids, I'll just stop to death if you don't get what you want. What is that teaching kids? You know what I mean? If, some, if I had an organisation in my school when my kids were at school and I found out the, the leader the main guy of the group had gone on a hunger strike because that's the only way he was going to get what he wanted. I'd be kicking his flipping ass. Because that's telling the kids, well, if you want something and you don't get it, just go on a hunger strike. You'll soon get it. Right? No, you don't. Because in this country, I've known them, force feed them. Years ago, there's a cases where they was force feeding the children because a, a, a child had gone on a hunger strike or an adult had gone on a hunger strike. And that's actually force feeding them. I think it was adults. So, but they do all this stuff, right, with children. You the foundation for kids never request or solicit fees or donations in exchange for any of our So really, I don't think they're the, yes, they're the sort of people you need in schools to get the word out about Sebastian, right? But actually being out there, boots on the ground, searching, no. Now, I know, uh, not divers are going down again this weekend. I just saw a, a short video of, his, of what he said he's planning on doing and who he's with. So he's planning on going down again this weekend. Right? To, and he said, it, it, depending on what the plan is, he'll either do an all-nighter, which means searching through the day and during the night, or just searching through the day and then continuing on the Sunday. Now, these are people going out the way, they're not asking for money. They just want to find Sebastian. They're not bothered about threats. They're out there looking for Sebastian. Now, this is why UCN got threats, because they wasn't looking for Sebastian. They're more concerned about, oh, well, we need some portalies. We need some big tents for people to sit under. You know what I mean? Meaning, can you buy us all this stuff? Oh, darn. You're out there searching, so why do you need flipping big ass tents? And why do you need portaloos? I know Seth. 
and that group was out on the searching on the Friday before UCN came in. They was all out there searching on the Friday. They didn't have no big tents. They didn't have chairs to sit on. Unless they brought some in their cars. You know what I mean? They didn't have no flipping pork to lose. They was going in the bushes. And that's what UCN was asking for. They was asking for all these things. Now, so, you know, you're out there to flipping search. Not to sit on flipping chairs. I'm sorry. So that's why they was getting the backlash for. You know, you found the foundation. I don't know what they actually did. I don't know if they went into schools in Hendersonville. I don't know if they've gone into those schools there. I spoke about Sebastian. We don't even know if the law enforcement have spoke to the teachers or the children he was with in the class. People on the bus who saw him, the bus driver. He don't have to do any of that. Quite sad they didn't even do a forensic search of the house. I doubt they've done anything. Because they took the mother's and the stepfather's word that Sebastian got up during the night, hmm, went down, walked out of his bedroom, out the door, and poof, gone. Just gone. Right? They believe that story. I'd be going, yes, okay, ma'am. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Get the forensics team in here. You know what I mean? If I heard, if I was a law enforcement and, I, and the mother and stepfather told me that story, I'd be going, yes, ma'am. Okay, sir. Yes, ma'am. And then in the next breath, I'd be looking over to my apartment and go, get the forensics team in here now. This story is not adding up. Get the forensics thing. Yes, they have to get a warrant, but apparently you have to have probable cause. Probable cause is the boy apparently left that house with no shoes, no coat, no money, no phone, and no trace of his scent. No video cameras of him, nothing. So tell me where he went. That's probable cause to me. And we've only got Katie's word that he came home on the Sunday night. I think he did. I truly think he did. Right? And something happened before the bins were put out. Or after the bins were put out. Could have been after. Right? But where are his clothes? Where are those items he was wearing on the Sunday? Law enforcement, we don't know if they've got them or not. If they haven't got them, has the mother got them? Can she produce those items? If not, why? So, but you now, um, this whole case, but and then you've got Seth who's got those two private investigators and one's talking on a YouTube show. What's it called now? Survivors being survivors, some survivors winning survivors or something like that. And um, I don't think she should have been on there. I really don't. She shouldn't be talking on there. She should be talking to Seth, like I said, and then if Seth wants to talk about it, then that's up to Seth. He's paying her to find information for him, not for her to go on, on a YouTube channel and sit there blubbing everything out. I don't care if her name was put out there and she wanted to keep it quiet, like she said. Right? But now my name's out there, I might as well go ahead. No, you don't go ahead. 
your name's out there, but it doesn't mean, oh, well, everyone knows I'm, I'm one of the PIs for Seth Rogers. So I might as well go on a YouTube channel. No, no, love, no. I don't agree with that. And if I see her on another YouTube channel, I will be in their comments, <clears throat> typing away. Get off. You should not be on here. You know what I mean? The other PR isn't on there. We don't know who the other PR is. And to be honest, it's not our... It's not for us to know. It's for Seth. He's the one paying for these PIs. Not us. Not law enforcement. Not anyone else. So. Uh, it just makes me sick. Again, it's like she's in it full of money. If I get my name and my picture out there. Right? I have more people come to me. No. No, you're there for Sebastian. You work for Seth Rogers. You don't work for anyone else. After the case is solved, then go on these YouTube channels if need be. Only after the case is solved. Only once the investigation is over and whether it's going to be a criminal investigation or not, or if anyone's going to be charged, and once it's, if there's been any charges made, then once it's gone to court, then once it's been to court, if charges are made, then sit on YouTube channels and say what you know. But not now. I don't care. I don't even care if your name's blasted over every social network site. Do not go on YouTube channels and talk about this case. She already made the blunder. While saying about the dog sitting on that scent, and then she's had to come back and apologize, saying, No, it was a false scent. Well, don't go on these YouTube channels and you won't make these blunders. Don't go on them. That's what I've got to say to that PO. I don't know her name. Didn't really take much notice of her name. Right? Um, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, I've just took that down. All right. Let's find it. If you haven't seen it already, don't bother. All right. Survivor. Survivor. Like what that calls it. The group is called, right? Right, let's have a look. Mm. I'm not even up to that. Yeah. I will put that link in the description. Okay. <laughs> Um, just share screen. And okay. then you want to come, you you want to come in, and you want to say, "Hey, look, I I just need you to to clarify some things because you said some things, and we're not seeing the actual data line up to them, and and then gauge a reaction." I don't. I did a lot of interrogations overseas on kind of terrorism folks on target and, and back in places. Um, I never wanted to go in with the strict, this is how the, in, the interview is going to go. Because I had certain facts, I had certain thoughts, and then I let the interview dictate to me and how they reacted to me and how they 
they, you know, uh, you get everything from the non, you know, nonverbal stuff and you, and you get feedback and, and you want to make them feel comfortable with you to tell you. And, and if you think one did it and one didn't do it, a lot of things electronically to do. speech analysts who uh I think that there's um some strange things going on here and Heather Cohen uh is back to join us. I just introduced you Heather. Thank you for coming back. Um so Let's just kick things off. Rob D'Amico, our first time guest here. Rob, um, seven weeks, a missing child with autism here. And obviously time uh, is the enemy. Uh, what, what do you make of this case from a macro perspective so far? Heather Cohen. She's one of the eyes. Right? Now, people, I was reading the comments and they're going, Oh, thank God Heather's in, on the case now. She'll, you know what I mean? She shouldn't be in, on the YouTube. She shouldn't be up there. I'm sorry, she shouldn't be. Well, from the macro perspective, you look at it, uh, you always have to, when the case starts, go with all the possibilities because you don't want to rule one out and then close your eyes to it. And that's the dangerous part of, uh, of some of these. So you want to you want to look at if he really did just walk out of his in bare feet, how far would he go? How, how would he get to a place and, and all those things? And then you look at the, was he lured out via online stuff? And then you look at uh, the one that always usually turn out to be one of the most likely ones is someone involved him. Uh, so you go on those roads, and when you look at it now, how far can a you know a fifteen year old walk in bare feet that you're not getting? They did the right thing. They had all the searches out. They had the cans. They had all those things that you would think. But you're also looking then at his all his online stuff, his phone, his, his video games, all his communications. And if you're still not finding anything that's leading you down to that road, that someone lured him out that he was communicating with someone. And then you start looking at all the other things, naturally how you track. I've been to a ton of man tracking courses as a, as a sniper. Um, there's ways to really look at finding a person that is just not trying to evade you. That's walking out there. But then you start looking at, like I started watching all the videos today and all the inconsistencies mm -hmm. of people that he was involved with that are saying things. and and the stories that they laid out are are somewhat provable. If she said that they were at BJ's, BJ on the commercial ID side of where they were during that day, and you start matching up where in that story does do things start leading uh, like from what they're saying. But but then you start looking at the the commentary that he's saying, and he's getting caught up in lies from. One interview to another, and you have to start like wondering, okay, why is he lying? Why is he saying one thing to one person and something else to say Nancy Grace or some of these other folks? So you start looking at that and we're like, well, like just because someone's lying doesn't mean they're lying for the reason that you think so, but you have to end up going down that route. And you're still following all the other leads with that. And then you start getting pulled back. You, you can't blinder on you start going like why is it logical you can't find a 15 year old boy that walked out of his house without shoes that wasn't trying to evade us that would just naturally did that and then you go in vacations like because by now seven weeks you've done all the search warrants on email cell phones video games and i've done a lot of technical uh technical uh things trying to find kidnapped people 
that you can start going down that road and seeing who's communicating with them. And now you start bringing in all the cell data of the stories that were, were laid out there. I just don't understand. Just to let you know, my internet's fluctuating up and down. So if you lose me, if I go off screen, I'll be straight back. This guy, though, he, he brings up some good points. I'm not saying the YouTube channel, that show was you know, good. I'm just saying she shouldn't be on there. Right? And something she says, oh, yeah, I'll try and find you. Uh, if you're not speaking, if you could just keep yourselves muted, that would help me, uh, Rob and Tracy. You know, it's a little bit of a pain, and then we'll unmute as you go. Um, but Heather, um, there's a question here from Ann. Is it is it time to try pinning the mom, uh, Katie Proudfoot, against the father, Chris Proudfoot, with a time li limited bluff about the first one gets the deal kind of thing? Um, are we at that point yet where you've got to pressure one side or the other? Well, no, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not at that point. I've only been working this case for two days. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know where law enforcement are at with it. Um, but I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to figure out who I even, you know, believe should be on the radar. And I'm not at a point to, uh, that I'm comfortable uh, any um, we're looking at a picture. here obviously is sebastian rogers missing 15 year old uh if you have tips 1-800 tbi fine uh, person who works alongside her, her uh, at justice warriors is tracy ellis uh, how are you tracy I'm great. How are you? Doing well. Do we know if Heather's planning on jumping on? He should jump in any apartment oh. complex. She was out uh, working a job. Yeah. Oh, and do I did I get the right information? Are you has Heather now been uh, retained actually to work on this case on the Sebastian Rogers case or not? <laughs> we are going to let Heather answer that. However. <laughs> <laughs> he he can tell by my um he can tell by my cues i have all my cues going mark mcclish was uh we trained with mark mcclish so um hmm. that was great he he's does uh speech analysis and statement analysis hmm. interesting i know um um there have been several prominent speech analysts who uh, think that there's um some strange things going on here and heather cohen uh is back to join us. I just introduced you, Heather. Thank you for coming back. Um, so let's just kick things off. Rob D'Amico, our first time guest here. Rob, um, seven weeks, a missing child with autism here. Um, it doesn't smell good at this point. And obviously time uh, is the enemy. Uh, what, what do you make of this case from a macro perspective so far? Well, from the macro Heather, yeah, I'm sorry, I got it. I would have my mic muted because my dog was working. And um, yeah, I am. 
Um, can you tell us a little bit more? <laughs> sure. Well, to be honest, I was wanting to um, hide, you know, in the shadows for a little bit, but uh, what I understand, I, I believe that the sh sheriff gave a statement to Channel 2 that um, there have been two private investigators hired. And so the cat's out of the bag, uh, myself, and there is another private investigator also has been officially hired. Um, and so, yeah. And are you are you hired, if I can ask, by Sumner County? Is that who hired you? No, um, no, I am hired by um, the biological father. And and again, I, what I didn't want that to be known publicly, but it, the cat's out of the bag, everybody knows. So there's really no reason to hide it at this point.
Sorry, I was on mute. Sorry. Why? Right? I was just saying, she shouldn't be on YouTube. She should wait until the case is over and finished with. Right? But I can understand why Seth is getting so mad. Because law enforcement took him five weeks, five or six weeks, something like that, to get them to show him proof of life. Right? And, but apparently you got Katie sitting on a, a, this other channel saying, yes, law enforcement are in touch with us daily. What the hell? Seth could, had to wait five weeks to get that proof of life. Why? It's proof of life. And as I said with the Riley Strain case, the police put out the video of him literally step for step walking down this road. They even got him hitting his head on a post. Right? Step for step for step all the way down this road. Every camera that they caught him on, they showed it. Right? Why can't they show that video of Sebastian leaving the restaurant? I know it's a different law enforcement, a different county. Right? But I still don't understand why they can't show, show that, release that video. Right? There's been videos released by Katie, I believe, of him being at a party, but his aunt was just like so dismissive of him all the time. And all you could see was this beautiful smile of this lad. This beautiful smile from this lad. And yet the aunt was so dismissive of him, of him all the time. I seriously believe he had such a busy day from, from getting up in the morning, doing his video calls to his grand and whoever, his aunt, his uncle, his dad, whoever, right? Then going to pick up his niece and then meeting his two aunts and then going to BJ's and then going bowling. And don't forget, they did a bit of grocery shopping, snacks, and then going for dinner. He had sensory overload. His head was overloading of all the different noises, the sounds, the smells, everything. So I think he's come home and he's had some sort of meltdown. And when she says, I heard a thud. No, that's, that, yes, you probably did hear a thud. You heard that thud as he fell. You was in the room. That's you saying, as he fell, it's such a thud when you hit the floor. Or such a thud when you, whatever. You was in that room when that happened. So, I seriously believe something happened that night and that's why she was then on the phone for two, three hours. Three hours. God. I haven't talked to my... I'm going to speak to my husband for three hours on the phone. Even before we got married, did I speak to him for three hours on the phone? No. Didn't happen. Wouldn't happen. Even then, I wouldn't talk to someone. Well, I have. Tell a lot, I do. Uh, there's two people, like, if we get on the phone and we're talking, we can be there talking for three hours easily, right? But that's woman, woman to woman, right? And I wouldn't be on the phone for three hours to some guy. No. After 10 minutes, I've said everything I want to say, and it's like, okay, I'm going out, bye. You'd be lucky if you got 10 minutes out of me, let alone three hours. So I think that was a cover story. 
Yes, they may have it on record that there was a three hour phone call. But what do you say if you're going to do something? Leave your phone at home. So, she, yes, she could be on the phone to Chris. But don't forget, she said she was reading a book as well. Right? So, did he leave his phone in the... Five wheeler. I don't know. Because he couldn't have phoned his mother or father because that would be on record that he phoned them. But something happened. And then in the morning, I think she's put in. But then again, something she said on that first interview. She said, I went in and woke him up. I went in and woke him up. And he was gone. Why would you wake someone up if they're not there? Hmm? I went in and woke him up. He was gone. No, I went in to wake him up. And he was gone. He wasn't there. I walked in his room to wake him up and he wasn't there. I went in and woke him up. And he was gone. Go back to that first interview they did with the news, news people. Not the one with um, Duchess, I believe. Not that one. Not the YouTube channel one. The one they did give a news channel. The four-part one comes in four parts. Go and watch that again. And you will hear a say, I went in to I went in and woke him up and he was gone. No, I walked in his room to wake him up, he wasn't there. I went in to wake him up, he wasn't there. That would make more sense. I went in to wake him up or I walked in his room to wake him up and he was gone. He wasn't there. But not, I, I went in and woke him up and he was gone. Just think about that. So I think perhaps there was a thought. And perhaps his mum started to work. Is that you, Bubba, falling out of bed? No, ma'am. Well, whatever you're doing, get to bed now and go to sleep. And I think he's got into bed. Because people are saying about the bedroom light going on and off at certain times. Right? I think he's got into bed and I think he's bumped himself. Right? And he's, he passed during the night. Right, he's passed in his sleep, and that's when she's panicked. Rather than just saying, oh my god, she fell asleep, he's died in his sleep, which she could have done if that is the case. If that is the case, she could have done, and this would have been finished three weeks, six weeks ago. But for some reason, if that has happened, and she's hit his body and put him in the car. Right, then come back, passed him over to someone like her mother in law, not saying anything, just saying there's a pass over, a, a pass off, right, or someone she's passed him off to someone. She then come back, right, to the house, and that person has took Sebastian wherever. And that is true. She wouldn't know where Sebastian is. So if they ask her, where's Sebastian? I don't know. Do you know where Sebastian is? No. And that would be true because she wouldn't know where he is. But it said yesterday, I don't know if anyone heard that on that podcast or 
show last night where she's talking to dog the bounty hunter. You know, he's not heard seeing anything about this case. And she just generally gave him an overview of it. And he said, going from my inch from my perspective, he said, it would mean if there's no scent or anything like that, then that child was passed on. And it would involve water or a landfill. Right? And he knew nothing of this case, and everything he was saying was boom, 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 hitting it on the head every time. And he said, How old is the child again? And she said, 15. He said, No. No. So people are saying, Dog, the bounty hunter needs to come in and solve this. No, 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 no. We don't need Dog the bounty hunter. We need law enforcement to step up and do their job. We don't know. Perhaps they are. We don't know. Right? It's frustrating. Because they're not saying anything. They did tell us a few little things in that interview. Like TBI said. The parents were. What was it she said? The parents were cooperating at the beginning. At the beginning. But now they're. Um, and they have done everything. No, they have done Nearly everything we've asked them to do, or almost everything we've asked them to do. So what haven't they done? What haven't they done? So there was helpful, cooperative in the beginning, and there's, uh, they've done almost everything to something like that. Go back and watch that press release. And it's on here. It's on my channel from last night. And it's like, so what haven't they done then? They've done almost everything you've asked of them. What have they not done? And are they being cooperative now? No, like you said, there was at the beginning. But, who? No. So there's two giveaways there. So I don't think the family, I don't think law enforcement are keeping them informed. I think that's just Kate being, I'll say this, I'll tell them that law enforcement are keeping us informed because then that makes us look innocent. That makes us look the good parents. No, it doesn't. It makes you look a liar. The truth will come out. And something else Chris said in, in that first interview when they did it with the news news channel something like the word i can't remember the exact wording now it's something like he did he didn't expect it to explode or go off like it did he was expecting them to be able to say to law enforcement he's just walked out the house law enforcement come in put, give, get the statements off them do a quick search find nothing put it down to a walk out a walk away right that was it and that would have happened. That would have happened if YouTube had not hooked up on it. And Twitter and all TikTok and all those other social network sites. If YouTube had not jumped on this at the beginning, they could have just wrote this, wrote this away as a, a child gone missing. Just walked away from home. Right? Even though there's no scent, no video of him, nothing. And I think it would have also gone that way if it hadn't been for Seth. Because Seth wasn't believing that story that Sebastian had just walked out of that house. He wasn't believing that story. He walked out of that house with no shoes on. Big red flag there in Seth's eyes. Right? 
He walked out of the house with no phone, no money, no coat, and the one thing he loves to play is switch. He took no bag with him, no snacks, no water, no shoes, nothing. A child who's walking away from home would make sure they've got something in their bag to eat and snack on and drink. They're going to. He's 15 years of age, he's not five. Right? Now, I'm going to do a test one day next week on my daughter in law. And I've told her about it and I've said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here into your son's room, shut the door, and I'm going to take, I don't know, three or four, about three items of his. Could be three items of clothing, could be three toys, three whatever, right? I'm then going to give you, because I want her to be at that, oh my God, panic mode, right? I will give her 60 seconds then to go in there and find out what I've got, in the, what I took out of that room, right? Because she's got a minute to go in the wardrobe, to go in the drawer, to look around for his toys, what toys are missing? What clothes are missing? What shoes are missing? What coats are missing? You know what I mean? She's got 60 seconds to find that. I'm just going to take two or three items. It might, As I said, it might be a top, a t-shirt, t-shirt and bottoms and a toy. Or it might be a pair of shoes, some pyjamas and a toy. Something like that. Right, but I'm going to give, I might even give a 90 seconds, a minute and a half. Because, yeah, about a minute and a half. Because I wanted to have that panic feeling. Okay, I've got 90 seconds to find out what, you know what I mean? So I'm going to do that with her next week. Then I go to pick Ellis up on the Friday. I don't have him this weekend, sorry. I've got him the following weekend. So when I go to pick Ellis up on the Friday, to bring him here in two weeks' time, I'm going to do it on it. I'm going to go over and I'll do it. I'll either do it on the Friday or on the Sunday. Right, probably be on the Sunday when I take him home because on the Friday I don't get much chance because I get to hers and then we gotta go pick a daughter up from nursery at twenty past two. Then we get back about twenty to three, and at ten past three, five past three, we're walking out again to go and pick the boy, a son up from school. So I'll probably do it on the Sunday when I take him home. But that's what I'm going to do, just to see if she can tell me what's missing. Because the mother said, we only know for a fact that he went out in those pyjamas. Right? Because that's what she saw him in last. Right? So she said. Yeah? He may not be. He may not have been in his pajamas. He may have still been fully dressed, and was so hyped up from the day with his sensory overload and everything going on. He, he just had a meltdown, and I think something happened in the house, and he, he either sadly passed away in the house that that night, or. He went to bed and he fell asleep and passed it in his sleep. And the only reason they cover it up, which I don't see would help, would be because Seth was hoping to get his daughter. Right? But he's not going to get his daughter while they've got a missing child in that house. They're not. It's not going to happen. So either way, it's had more chance of him getting his daughter if they if that has happened and he's died in his sleep or there was an accident, if they'd reported it as an accident straight away, he'd have more chance of getting his daughter that way because it was an accident. Plus he wasn't there. So he keeps telling us. So he keeps telling us. I don't know. People say he was at home. I don't know because he had to use a car that no one knows about. Right? 
But then again, it's because you've had his mother come and pick him up. But then again, that would be on a phone call. So they'd have that phone call. There'd be a trail if he was back at that house on that Sunday. So I seriously think something happened and there'd been a pass off of the bat of the bat I really do. But unless if she cannot provide those items of clothing that he was wearing on the Sunday, then that to me is very sus. Very sus. Very, very, very sus. So sorry, my cat keeps crying all over me. So I don't know what to make of it. What with the PIs and then you've got this new valve validation now backing away. What the hell is going on? I just want someone to come in and help Seth without wanting money. Right? Without wanting money. Do it for the love. Do it for the have a heart. You know what I mean? Get him a, an attorney who willing who can do pro bono for them because they know what it's like. They've got children themselves and they'd probably be thinking, we know what it's ow, cat. cat. They probably know and understand what he's going through, sort of because as a mother I'd be I'd be like Seth, not sleeping, not eating. Not drinking properly. You know what I mean? I'd be out there looking. I'd have torches on the night time. The big feck off torches out there looking for my son. They'd have to knock me out for me not to be out there looking. They'd have to pin me down, knock me that out, so that I, I'm not out there looking and B, I'm getting some sleep. Because otherwise, I'd be out there like Seth. So, anyway, I'm going to leave it up there for tonight. I just wanted to show you that one little clip back where she said, I didn't really want to come out in public. But because law enforcement announced that, just because law enforcement announced that you is PI, doesn't mean you have to come on YouTube, love. Stay off YouTube. It's not going to help. It is not going to help. Just do your job. Report back to Seth. And let Seth decide what he wants to tell us and what he doesn't want to tell us. He's not a stupid man. He's not that. And if you find any information out involving Kate or Chris, then he'll tell law enforcement. You know what I mean? And he'll tell them with you so you can both go there with the information so they can then act on it anyway i would just like to say thank you to everyone being here with me tonight and and i will be back tomorrow right yes back tomorrow night. Don't you know what will be happening tomorrow? I really don't. You never know. But until then, you know, thank you for being here. And before I go, before I go, hit that like button. Please. It, 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 it warms my heart. And if you want to tap, give me a heart. Give me some love. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Good night.